<laughs> what up, guys? I don't know if you're- I'm sorry, I just wanted to do that. so much. I just wanted to do that to see how you'd react. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What up, guys? I don't know about Pierre. I promised for any future Alpha Beta's content, she would be present. And she's present. But she's also very hungry. She's had a long day. So let's get this reaction over quickly. Um, yeah, but you did seem well, tired, at least. Eight hours, I guess. <laughs> All right, so let's get this this Alpha Beta's exclusive sneak peek almost t about two weeks before the actual pilot is supposed to release. Let's check this out. A sneak peek. Yes. Ooh, a sneak I am peek. really excited. And then sneak I'll peek. we'll be we'll both be react reacting to this, but then I'll be analyzing it later. So on her own, on my own. I don't usually do that with what I watch. <clears throat> no, no, my no, brain no, no. works differently. She reacts. I analyze and review. Here we go. Rolling up with the squad! Yeah! Really, Jane? We're on a tight window here. Yeah, I don't care. Ugh. <sighs> Damn it, Steven! What are you doing? <laughs> what the? Mm, cotton blend. I know it. <clears throat> hey. What's this? <clears throat> well, according to the label, this is cocaine. Great prank, guys. Real original. <laughs> But that's obviously not cocaine. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It does say it right there in pretty big letters. So obvious, they'd never believe it. Oh, it's the <laughs> best way to sneak drugs in. When I go through security at concerts, I just carry them in my hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you should do a cavity search. <laughs> Baking soda. Damn it, Jane! You ruined everything! Oh. I know what the... <laughs> Okay, come on. That that's not mine. Oh, that looks a lot like Steven. Anatomically precise, unflattering, but oh, extraordinary. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Mason. All your favorite things in one bag. How and in what order does he use those? Aha, uh -huh, very funny, guys. Okay, enough of the prank war. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> what is it now? We got a weapon. Everyone down. <laughs> oh! I knew it. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> I you brought a rocket launcher into CIA headquarters. Uh, that was actually Buck who brought a rocket. Shut up, Mason. We know you packed his bag. Fine. So what? We use rocket launchers all the time. Inside the game. Why would you need a rocket launcher in real life? To launch rockets? I mean, yeah. She's not serious, right? <laughs> I mean, this is Alpha Team. The only thing separating us from the complete breakdown of society I'm is fun. four twenty-something gamers. Ah, why did we gamers, why did baby. By the way, had you seen the had you seen the official trailer? Yeah, I won't make you watch the sneak peeks. That's just that's just a lot to unload. But at least you should see the trailer. Okay. Well, here we are then. Seeing the trailer. Breaks wow. 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 What I'm about to show you will change how you see the world. Are you telling me we're powering the country with video games? This is Alpha Team, an elite virtual strike force. Sending them inside the game makes them part of the code. We're in. They can do everything the average player can't. What's up, you Nazi bitch? <laughs> Evan! American heroes. Evan. I'm the best player of all. The beat is fire. The thing about yeah. hover shoes is it's all about small, subtle movement. That's it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. That that's not mine. It feels really natural to introduce us in detail for the benefit of a new audience. <laughs> Thanks for that. Willfully reckless and dangerously arrogant. <laughs> we never do the right thing. I know, right? Like that time I killed that old guy in real life. <laughs> Isn't that wow. glorious? Glorious! <laughs> glorious! 
<laughs> oh, these heathens. That is that is so like it, it's so well attuned to their like the characters are so well attuned to their actual mm-hmm. in real life personalities with a bit of added flair. Well, and what's funny is that <clears throat> what I get from this trailer this is not the type of show that I would normally be watching, but because it's these guys and these <clears throat> guys mean a lot to us, just in watching all their videos, like, frick yeah, I'm gonna watch it. And then, of course, you hear some of the of the voice actors, you see some of the voice actors' names besides those four, and the art style, it's clearly made by the same people who did Rick and Morty. Yeah, and I saw that in the beginning. Yeah, but it, it like... These four idiots have teamed up to put together their own studio <laughs> to put together an animated series like this. Oh, yeah. This looks amazing. Yeah, I'm excited to see it, oddly enough. Like, it, it, it's obviously got some of the Rick and Morty flair from the studio that helped produce it, but it also has plenty of the, you know, personality that the four individuals put into their gaming videos. You yeah. Know, Evan, Tyler, Marcel, and Brian. But yeah. yeah. It's a lot of personality. <laughs> All in one from the four of them. I already pegged um, Eddie as, like, the sort of semi-arrogant leader. I've already pegged Mason as, like, a chill, smart aleck and, and, like, super intelligent and clever. Mm -hmm. I've already pegged Tommy as, like, super naive and innocent but can get carried away. Mm -hmm. And, um, And Buck as, like, a little bit of an arrogant hothead. I've already pegged him, like, as those four kind of archetypes. It's reasonable. <laughs> Just from that. Oh, yeah. Well, and, again, and obviously I went into a lot more detail, but that's that's the general gist of it. Yeah. But, oh my gosh, that, that All scene. in all, all four of them are troublemakers. Oh, hell yes. Hardcore. And the fact that the CIA is actually bringing four 20-something reckless gamers for a top secret project to power the country. like A terrible idea, really. Terrible but idea. But... Bad idea. Then it wouldn't make a good show. Mm. No. No, it wouldn't. If it, was, if it was a good idea, that's boring. Oh, yeah, super boring. boring. Oh, yeah. No, I, I wholly agree on that. I've created enough stories to know that. You gonna go eat now? Boring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna go eat. I'm gonna start my analysis. I'm probably gonna go scene by scene. Peace. I'm just gonna really enjoy watching this. Again, I'm not the type to analyze what I'm watching. I've never been That's that bad. way. Yeah, she is. I'm a scientist. She is more analytical, anyways. I just like to sit back re- and like relax while I watch things and just kind of enjoy <clears throat> it as it comes. And maybe I look a little deeper into things. Maybe I don't. But. Usually I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, so. she, she's the type to enjoy stuff. I'm the one who reviews from both a scientific and a story standpoint, being a scientist and a writer. So, yeah. That's what but happens. We're just very different. That's okay, though. That's totally okay. We can still both bit enjoy- of both. Yeah, we can still both enjoy the show. Heck yeah. I, You'll get a bit of both <laughs> of us. I will forewarn you, kind of like I do with some of my reactions, though. Um, once episodes do start getting released... I might pause every now and then to kind of say, sprinkle. You, you pause a bit. Yeah. yeah, I'm aware. A little bit. I'm aware. Just figured out the show. Hey, I may, not, I may not watch those reactions because South Park isn't really my thing. But I'm aware. I Straight know. Straight out of her mouth, by the way. South Park isn't her thing. I, I keep telling people that. I know how you are. I know a thing or two about your channel. Get out of here. Right, I'm out. Peace. Get out. All right, time to analyze this scene by scene. I will do my absolute damnedest not to make this analysis as long as the um trailer analysis. The trailer wasn't even a minute and a half long, and I turned it into a 40 minute analysis. What the hell? There's something wrong with me. So, here we go. CIA headquarters, like we've seen. Yep, these four, these four are coming in. We, we actually get some nice drum beats in the background, so obviously that's kind of for comedic effect. But, I mean, it, they are entering into the CIA, so clearly there's going to be plenty of uh, little random bits of comedy. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> really, Jane? We're on a tight window here. Okay, so they address this individual as Jane, so clearly they've been here before. And, like... 
Eddie already is... <clears throat> Eddie already is just like, really? But of course, he's also at the lead of the pack. So the idea that I came up with in my analysis of the trailer, that Eddie was like, you know, the sort of de facto leader of the group, still stands, even with this simple analysis. Uh, Tommy looks surprisingly unhappy. Um, and Mason, like, uh, Buck looks like, look, he, he's got a little bit of a smirk on his face. I mean, I know it's going to happen later on in the scene, obviously. I wonder if it's because he knows he's going to get caught because of the disassembled rocket launcher that he has in his case, or because he's happy that maybe, you know, Eddie is getting like, you know, HALT from, from Jane. By the way, Jane, she's pretty buff. I'll give her that. She's, she's got some, she's got some muscle tone on her. Yeah, I don't care. Oh wait, no, no, no! no. <laughs> Hold up, I, I, oh, I totally forgot that this happened. Hold up, watch Stephen. Jane, run it. Oh, okay, never mind. Tommy is is a little bit unhappy with um Stephen, who just kind of bumps into him and then later sniffs him. <clears throat> so again, I quickly wanted to mention that the fact that Eddie addresses her by her first name Jane. I'm assuming that's her first name at least. It can be a last name, but most likely a first name, indicates that they have been here before. Or, like, whether they've been on a mission or not, but they clearly have been here before. Or they've met her. They've most likely met her. Maybe they haven't been here before. If this is from the pilot episode, that would more likely attest to the fact that they have met her before, but maybe they haven't been there. It's either one or both. It's, it's definitely one or both. A tight window here. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I love the whole outfit that Tommy wears. <clears throat> the animation is already so Rick and Morty, but it's so smooth. Like, funny enough though, Rick and Morty animation and designs tend to be a lot more lanky in appearance. These four characters are decidedly n well, the characters in general actually are decidedly not. I just noticed it with Jane and her muscle definition. <gasps> Damn it, Steven, what are you doing? Okay, uh, yes, the fact that they're addressing him by his name as well means that they have met before. So if this is from the pi- okay, if this scene is from the pilot, which I'm willing to bet that it is, that raises some questions. Primarily, that raises some questions on, you know, how, how the pilot would initially start. Whether these four gamers are all of a sudden being brought together, or they've already been brought together and they've, you know, had a little bit of, you know, training and stuff, and now they're being deployed on missions. Or, some, or something to that effect. But I don't think these four gamers were all of a sudden just thrown together necessarily in the pilot. If this is a scene from the pilot, that is. But again, they address Jane and Steven by their names, so they've clearly met... And clearly this is, like, Stephen's weirdness is a habit that apparently affects Tommy in some way, shape, or form. Hmm. Cotton blend. I know it. I'm, pr oh, by the way, the little raised eyebrow, Stephen might be gay. I'm just gonna call it right now. <clears> hey. <throat> What's this? Oh, well, according to the label... This is cocaine. Red <laughs> prank, guys. Real original. Okay, so Eddie is clearly not flattered at all by whatever his team has done putting the uh, cocaine in his suitcase. <laughs> but that's obviously not cocaine. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It does say it right there in pretty big letters. <clears throat> yeah, um, clearly all three of them work together in order to play this prank on him. So, the, and that, that still, that still reaffirms my idea of him being the de facto leader, but not the definitive leader. The fact that they're still playing pranks on him. I am almost positive, because it's Evan, and because of my analysis from the previous, uh, from the sneak peeks as well as the trailer, that he wasn't the definitive leader, but he was a sort of leader. The fact that these three clearly played a prank on him with a, you know, cocaine baking soda little bag, reaffirms that. He's not definitively automatically the leader, but he probably, I initially, I think more so it's that he acts, he's trying to assert dominance over the rest of them in some way, shape, or form. That make that makes sense. That makes sense. So obvious, they'd never believe it. Oh, it's the best way to sneak drugs in. When I go through security at concerts, I just carry them in my hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> These fucking
fucking heathens. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to say that. These heathens. Uh, oh, frick, who cares? <laughs> Ooh, you should do a cavity search. Baking soda. Damn it, Jane! You ruined everything! <laughs> Clearly, Jane is a bit of a rule follower. Had to make sure that, you know, it wasn't cocaine, it was just baking soda. So, of course, she wouldn't have played along with their prank or anything like that. I love how whiny Mason's voice got, though. How do you search? Baking soda. Damn it, Jane! You ruined everything! You ruined everything! <laughs> okay, come on. that That's not mine. Oh, that looks a lot like Steven. Anatomically precise. Unflattering, but... <laughs> Anatomically precise? Oh, gosh. That raises all kinds of questions. The two biggest ones being the fact that Steven responds with this after seeing that and confirms himself. Yes, it looks anatomically correct and flattering, but still, not, still cool. I'm almost positive that Steven is probably gay. <laughs> This I don't, I don't know. It just it just intuition. That's all I gotta say. But <clears throat> it raises another question: Why the hell does Tommy have that in the first place? If he's clearly not happy with whatever Stephen was doing earlier, then why the hell would he have this? Oh, that looks a lot like <clears throat> Stephen. Anatomically precise, unflattering, but oh, extraordinary. Extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> was that? W O four E what it like duct tape okay, w what is that can though? Is that is that a reference to something? Mm -hmm. Oh come on, Kevin Spacey autobiography. <laughs> Look at that, Mason! All your favorite things in one bag. <laughs> How and in what order does he use those? Yeah, I I we even when I was initially watching this trailer with my sister, was these parts in that suitcase? I'm like. That looks like an assembly for some kind of weapon, but I obviously didn't say it. And I absolutely turned out to be right. Also, I'm just kind of now noticing, um, I, I may have noticed it in the past, but just didn't think too much about it, is that these characters have five fingers on their hands, overall, which tend to be a slight bit harder to animate than, say, four fingers, like a lot of cartoons tend to do, like, you know, um, Gravity Falls, Rick and Morty, uh, trying to think of some others, but I can't right now. But the fact that they are five-fingered, and, you know, anatomically decent, at least compared to Rick and Morty, the studio that helped produce this, that is really interesting. I'm not, not, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. But it's really interesting. Aha, uh -huh. very funny, guys. Okay, <laughs> enough of the prank war. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> what is it now? We got a weapon. Everyone down. Oh! Hang on a sec. Prank war. Wait. Okay, now, how am I just now realizing that they all packed each other's suitcases or switched them around somehow? Is that what happened? Is that what happened for this security check? Huh, okay. <coughs> you brought a rocket launcher. Into CIA headquarters? Uh, that was actually Buck who brought her up. Shut up, Mason. We know you packed his bag. Fine. <laughs> hold up, hold up. I was noticing their faces as she was walking earlier. Because, again, I'm positive that this is head honcho. <clears throat> yeah, Buck is looking pretty, um... He's looking pretty, uh, sheepish. Tommy is too, but I would expect that of his character based on the analysis I've done of him. You brought... But a rock... But... <clears throat> Mason seems to be the only one who's relatively level. Like, you know, he he's still, he's still, his eyebrow is still like, you know, um, s uh, his eyebrows are still slightly bent in that sort of upward formation, suggesting that he does have a little bit of emotion about the subject that is currently happening with, you know, bringing an old rocket launcher into a CIA headquarters place of all places. But the rest of them seem to be a lot more expressive in terms of verbal and facial language. Even Eddie looks a little bit nervous. But the fact that all of them look as nervous as they do, despite how good they might be, despite them being important to this, they still probably recognize her as a very dominant force, which means that she does have a very stern and aggressive and assertive nature. I mean, it kind of makes sense for her to be, you know, a head honcho of a CIA division or something like that, but... Yeah, clearly, 
I, I overall, I think Tommy's the most expressive, expressive with his facial and his body language, which also in of itself reaffirms my idea that he's probably the most naive and innocent one. I don't know for sure, like, I'm sure he's got his own little quirks and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that, like, you know, he's super innocent. He's, like, he's not like a child or something like that, but he's definitely probably the most innocent of the four. That doesn't mean he's super innocent, but he's got the most innocence of the four, I think. I'm pretty sure. Rocket launcher. Into CIA headquarters. Uh, that was actually Buck who brought a rocket. Shut up, Mason. We know you packed his bag. She, oh wow, what a, what a, what, what pause is, especially from Buck and Tommy. Um, the fact that, you know, <clears throat> they address one another by name, I don't think her name has been said, not as far as I heard. But the fact that she's been addressing them by name, or at least seems to know about their names, seems to indicate that they do know each other a little bit. Whether they've been to this facility as of this point is uncertain. But you can definitely tell that it is like the primary facility or the primary control room, as it were, based on previous sneak peeks and trailers. Um, I can see the room in the background, this control room where Scientist Lady has been. I still don't really know her name. I may have seen it like once or twice, but I've honestly forgotten about it. But I guess now I know Steven and Jane. Obviously, these four characters as well, but I knew those characters long before the sneak peeks ever came out. They probably met before. Whether they've been in this facility yet as of this point is unclear. Possibly, but uh, there's no way to determine that at the moment. But they clearly know one another. And she clearly knows them well enough to know that Mason did pack Buck's bag, or suitcase, with a disassembled rocket launcher. So, interest again, the biggest thing I'm trying to figure out is if, is if this is from the pilot. It makes sense that this would be from the pilot. I, okay, th this is also assuming that this would be a story written by me, which obviously it is not. If I were to do a story like this, I would have them right from the get-go, where it's like, oh, these four individuals are meeting each other. We get to see initially how they interact, and then they get a little bit of training, and then they finally get to go to the facility. But this scene, or this, this general um, exclusive, you know, sneak peek scene, suggests that they've they've already had a little bit of training and a little bit of knowledge and conversations with one another like these four gaming characters as well as a couple of the cia operatives especially like you know head honcho and steven and jane and scientist lady again it makes sense that this would be from the pilot i'm trying to figure out where in the pilot this might fall from somewhere like in the very beginning maybe the middle maybe towards the end of the episode i'm not entirely sure i also don't know how long these episodes are going to be they could be like typical episode fashion like you know 22 23 minutes maybe they could be a little bit shorter than that maybe because it's a pilot it'll be longer or maybe that's not even true at all i don't exactly know there's still so much that i don't know about this that's what's really driving me that's what fascinate me fascinates me okay Fine, so what? We use <clears throat> rocket launchers all the time! Inside the game! Inside the- okay. I should have just watched it again all the way through just to make sure. Inside the game. These four characters have been... Okay, 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 okay. That throws so much out the window. Okay, I should have- I should have just watched the whole thing through again first. And, like, you know, really thought about it before I decided to do another deep dive. In the game, <clears throat> she says it, in the game, meaning they have been inside the virtual world before. This could, okay, so that raises interesting questions about the pilot in general. If this is part of a pilot. Again, it would make sense if, if, if the team released an exclusive scene from this, it would most likely be from either the pilot or a very early episode. If this is released from the pilot, this show might be a little bit more episodic than I would have initially expected it to be, but it could also be from an early episode, like, you know, may maybe say towards the end of episode two or something like that. They could still, like, you know, meet and get some formal training, or maybe this is from the very beginning of, like, say, the pilot episode. There are so many possibilities right now, but... 
And, you know, I, I know how Rick and Morty works, but this is also taking into account the creative imaginations and minds of four YouTube gamers who also primarily produced and wrote the show. I have no idea what their writing styles are possibly like, because, you know, gaming styles, conversational st like, they're all different kinds of styles. But writing style, especially when it comes to either writing a story, especially when it comes to writing a story for, like, a TV series, animated or not, is a very, very different process. So, and I have no idea what their writing styles are like. So I have no guess as to definitively say if this is from the pilot or if this is from another episode potentially in the future. Again, for something like this, it would make the most sense for it to be of the pilot, but that makes me wonder about the rest of the series then and the rest of the episodes following. Why would you need a rocket launcher in real life? To launch rockets she's not serious right she's not serious right <laughs> okay yeah i called out mason already for being probably the most level-headed and intelligent of the characters i think i still stand by that but i think he's a lot more quippy and a lot more snarky than I initially would have given him credit. I, I should have expected that. This is Marcel we're talking about. He's He can be very snarky sometimes, but his character is a lot more snarky than I initially um, intended, or uh, that I initially analyzed as such. Tommy might have a slight bit more confidence than I thought. Buck may be a little bit more reserved than I thought. I don't know about Eddie. He's the, the the analysis for that character still still seems relatively solid for what I presented uh, during my analysis of the trailer, but okay. Again, I'm just wondering which episode this could be from. Putting everything together, I mean, m my lack of knowledge on the writing style of of these four gamers in particular. Given the fact that this is the first time that they're doing something like this, but we also don't really know about too much about the episodes, like say the length. We don't really know too much about the length of the episodes, how frequently they're going to appear. I could imagine something like this either appearing weekly, which is unlikely, bi-weekly, which is definitely possible, or monthly, which I feel could also be possible. I feel like bi-weekly would be the most, the most um, likely. Maybe the most logical as well. Again, putting everything together though, this scene is likely from the pilot episode. When it takes place in the pilot episode is a little bit unclear. It could almost make sense to place this relatively early on in the pilot episode, because then we get a good feel for the character. We get a we get a pretty good feel for the characters. Granted, I got a I I think I got a really good feel for the characters analyzing the trailer alone. But if nobody had seen the sneak peeks of the trailer and they just watched this scene or the pilot episode with this scene being the starting block, I think you could get a good feel for what the characters are like. Not entirely, but you get a pretty good solid idea. I feel like. So this could be the intro sequence of the pilot episode, for all I know. It would make the most sense, but it does, I don't know, it almost concerns me a slight bit. But that, that, that's, that's, that's not necessarily from a reaction or an enjoyment standpoint. That's from a writing standpoint. I personally love to, in my stories, put a little bit more like, you know, backstory and kind of work my way up to building towards something or introducing a world or a character or something like that. I love doing that with my stories and I love seeing stuff like that in in other animated like story, animated series and stories and stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. I like the build up, but I'm not necessarily sure if this has any, but I'm still hoping I'm still hoping that it might have even a little bit, or a little bit for me to analyze, especially in the way of the characters, the world building, and the relationships between one another. Those are three, those are three big things that I look for in all different kinds of animated series. I mean, another aspect that I usually look into is character growth, but that's, I always look into character growth because that's something that I'm an absolute sucker for, even with my own characters, even with the characters I create. Okay. Okay. I think I've seen all that I need to. Okay. So I've got questions. I don't know if they'll be answered. 
but I definitely have questions. This will this will be interesting. I'm still really looking forward to the pilot because again, huge milestone for YouTube gamers to be the central stars of an animated series. That's freaking cool. That's awesome. That is wonderful. That's gold. And especially with these four gamers in particular, because a lot of people who would watch this are already familiar with at least one of their channels. Likely two or more of them. I'm familiar with all four of them, very much so at this point. So, and, and, and I know how they interact with each other, but I know that they can be a little bit creative as well. Again, I still don't really know their writing styles. So this will be really interesting to look at. I'd love to see a little bit more of the characters for sure. I'd hope that there's a little bit more world building as well. Obviously the hook is, you know, they send gamers into the virtual world to save mankind in the virtual world. So that's, that, that is kind of an interesting hook as is. Um, but yeah, if there's any way for me to, to like, you know, watch their characters progress or change or, you know, be elaborated on over time, or to see the relationships, like how they interact with one another, I'd love to see at least those, or even, even if just a little bit on occasion. But either way, this is going to be really entertaining to watch. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to end it there. I think I've rambled on for long enough. So thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little reaction and analysis. And as usual, until the next video, guys, check you laters.